This here on the course, I've tried to build a course that favours the attacking bold riding, and particularly some of the distances will suit the big striding horses or the horses that are really urged on well by their riders. And I think the first point to be made is that I've tried very hard this time to make the direct routes possibly a little bit more inviting than they have been in the sense that I want the majority of riders to think that the majority of the direct routes are quite jumpable. Having said that, there are alternatives at all the more difficult fences. There always will be. There have been for some years now. And uh, they're there. They'll take quite a long time. But we're certainly not in the business of eliminating horses for amusement's sake. The course is just a fraction longer than it's been for a few years. That's not particularly deliberate. It's just the way it worked out. So the timer, the optimum time, rather, is 12 minutes and 20 seconds. If the weather stays with us, the ground is certainly fast, and I'm sure that we will see horses round inside the time. I've no idea how many, because you can't predict these things, but it, it, the time is very much doable, even though it's a slightly longer course this year. I must say I'm much looking forward to seeing how it goes. One of Hugh's aims this year was to spread the challenges around the course, rather than have one or two bogey fences. In a sense, to even out the level of difficulty. Well, Sarah's gone on to badminton, and we're going to have a look at the course with a rider who's not competing this year, but who's ridden there quite a few times. So, Sarah, it's over to you. Thank you, Peter. The course this year runs the other way round from last year, and on the whole seems to be very fair. But I'm not going to tell you about the fences. We actually have somebody who's ridden round here six times, so she's got a mass of experience, and I'd like to welcome international event rider Jemima Johnson. Welcome, Jemima. Thank you, Sarah. And have you got a horse here this year? No, I decided to leave him at home this year. He's not quite ready. He'll be here next year. But you've had a good look round the fences, and here we are now at fence number four, the three diamonds. And can you show us all the options? Yes, it's the first one with a combination, the first thing that sort of asks them a bit of a question. The straightest way is through uh, a bounce, stride, a bounce, which sounds all right until you really look at it, and it all is slightly offset on angles, so you have to be very, very accurate. The next way is two nice corners, flowing corners. The third way is miles round, very complicated because it's through gaps, jumping rails and a lot of wiggling about. So it's easier, um, probably, I think, to do corner to corner rather than risking coming straight through. Fence 13, the Vicarage V. Badminton is famous for the Vicarage V, but this year slightly different. This time it's a real corner rather than just one rail across a ditch. The line is good to line up on. Um, you've got plenty of time to get it, but it is important, again, to be straight. The next alternative is like a coffin. Large rail, very short to a very wide ditch, and again, short to a rail again. The next alternative, for a green horse that maybe had a bit of a fright at five, you know, you've got to be thinking you've had time to to work out whether you risk the corner or not is a rail over a bridge round make sure you're straight again a wide ditch but room for strides to a rail decision time at the lake the problem with water is that you never really know what's going to happen when they land the lake tends to pull the horses very deep into the water and it does get deep incredibly quickly the first way, the straight way, is in to a bounce over logs. Much nicer than a square rail. I think the horses will jump it much easier. If things have gone wrong, you have to be thinking quickly. If the horse pecks, flounders a little bit, then it's on more in a straight way to come back round. The alternative here, step again, either bounce to a straight rail, or you can come up and get a stride to the straight rail. If things have gone really wrong and you are in trouble, the other way, the alternative to the first part, is to come round, and it is quite a long way round and quite time-consuming, over a log and then to turn and then back, back on yourself almost, over the rail and out. 
Moving on now towards the end of the course is the quarry. This year, slightly different, the change is at the beginning, where you come in on the flat to face a steep, short bank down into the bottom with a very upright rail. I'm not really sure what will happen down here. The rail, I think, is at an awkward distance from the base of the bank, so they have to come down into the bottom, and I think it might be a little bit uncomfortable. The other alternative is to go further up and round more of a jump down to a stride to the upright, or even further round through some rails, and then round, slope down, and then plenty of room to get to the rail. While we've been looking at the course with Jemima, the competitors have started the dressage phase. In the arena, Mark Todd, here with two horses, but this his first, Kinvara. This horse is showing quite a lot of movement in the medium trot with the forelimbs, but it's important that the hind limbs have the same amount of activity as the front legs. And Mark's a past master at picking up spare rides at the last minute. And as he's had Kinvara all season, he should feel well acclimatised on this horse. Half pass to the left. It's important that the forehand stays slightly in front of the quarters. You see there also the looseness of Mark Todd's body, Sarah. Yeah, sometimes tall people aren't always that loose because they tend to be naturally quite stiff and a little bit tense, especially in the small of the back due to the length of the back. Shoulder in right. It's important that the angle stays constant and there Mark showed a very consistent angle. Now this camera angle gives us an idea of how straight the horses are. So it's very important when we are training horses that they are straight. And a lot of horses are a little bit crooked, so it's very important that from a very early age we make sure that we correct this. Especially with the movements that are straight onto the judge, like coming up the centre line, where the judge can easily pick up whether the quarters are a little bit to the left or the right. As Mark Todd left the arena, we went over to hear from the man himself. Everybody's saying the course is sort of easier this year, and I think probably it's, it's a very fair test, but it, it's still badminton, the fences are still big, there's still lots of places that can sort of catch you out, you can have silly run-outs or whatever, um, and I certainly sort of won't be underestimating uh, the course. But Kinvara, he's been around once before. Um, he's done two Olympic Games and a World Championships. He's a very good jumper. Um, he knows the job, and providing he's fit and well, um, I'm hoping he'll go well. Back in the arena, this time Ginny Leng. She's won the trophy twice in the past, but this year her horse is the less experienced, Wilson Houdini. Ginny's a very good show person. Whatever she's doing on a horse, whatever discipline she's riding in, she always produces the best possible picture. And in the dressage, this is very important. Even if you do make a slight mistake, if you can sort of pretend that you haven't made a mistake and cover it up in the best way possible, then you're likely to earn a better mark. Now, this horse is coming across in medium trot, and it's quite a difficult movement, because it's like an S shape. So you have two changes of, of bend and a little bit on on the straight, so it's quite difficult to keep the horse in a good balance. And balance and rhythm really go hand in hand in the dressage. The extended walk, the horse should track over with the hind feet by five or six inches. The extended canter across the arena, the horse appears very straight, which is very important. And when she comes back to working canter, she makes a very smooth transition. The same in the transition back to trot. And now it's important, as you're going straight towards the judge, to keep the horse straight. And as the halt at the end is a separate movement, it's important to make the best job you can of the halt, therefore gaining a good mark to finish with. Now, Ginny will be very pleased with that test, as the horse stayed very relaxed and very calm. And you can see by the look on her face that she's very pleased. I'm quite surprised. Um, he can do really good tests and he can do sort of rather boring tests. And um, we had a very, very excited horse here this morning. I mean, the hands went past and, you know, everything happened. And he was a lunatic. 
And I just thought, well, this is hopeless. And it was lucky because he kept his um, little bit of excitement, but he was also a little bit relaxed. So we had the balance of him being up, but not kind of stiff and tense. So it was just lucky, really. And tomorrow, now you've got that lead? Well, I don't know, Jemima. Um, I'm going to go the bold ways, mostly, because he's that sort of horse, and uh, see what happens. You know what it's like. You go out there, and some days it goes right, and some days it doesn't. So I guess I'll just go out there and do the best I can. Great. Well, all the best for tomorrow. Thank you. Endurance Day started damp and misty, and the first rider we see is Lynn Bevan, early to go with Horton Point. Lynn's starting on phase A, and there are masses of people, so she has to have a mounted steward to actually be able to get away. And the horse thinks, because there's so much atmosphere, it's the start of the cross country, not just the start of the roads and tracks. Up on the steeplechase, and Hugh Thomas had shortened the course this year, Sarah. That's right, the steeplechase, it's all to do, again, with keeping a consistent rhythm and keeping the horse in balance. You're going pretty quickly, probably as fast as the National Hunt steeplechase horses would go. So you have to be very careful that you're not going so fast that the horse is going to lose his balance on the turns. On the roads and tracks with Mark Todd and Kimvara. So after the first roads and tracks, and the steeplechase, you then go straight on to the next roads and tracks. So there's no time to stop and walk the horse for 5, 10, 15 minutes. And in fact, every little bit of walking you do do is obviously slower than trotting. And as you've only got an allocated time, it's then important to make up the lost time when you were in walk. And there's an excellent shot of Worcester Lodge. And here we have Fred Bergendorf and Francis Hay-Smith and they've teamed up together. So instead of worrying about what lies ahead on the cross-country course, they can hopefully take their mind off it and have a good old natter on the latter stages of Phase C. Well, Fred and Francis look very relaxed in each other's company, and the horses look relaxed as well, which is great. But sometimes in this situation, the horses can get very excited, and then they're using their cross-country energy on the roads and tracks. But the tension's certainly back here, Sarah, in the 10-minute box. And then last minute tactics are really talked about. And some people go and watch the monitor. Some people want to keep away and just go through in their mind their plan of attack for riding around the course. Five, four, three, the vet two, listening to the heart. One, yes, the um, heart rates are very closely monitored. When the horses come off the roads and tracks, you're looking at a heart rate of around 40 to 60 beats per minute. One minute is five. Four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Well, now to the real meat of the three-day event, the cross-country. Blythe Tate with Delta, and this is when Blythe Tate really comes into his own, isn't it? That fence, although it looked easy, was actually, each part was offset. So you had to be very certain of your line and very certain that your horse wasn't going to waver either side of the proposed line. And Bly's coming to the second Luckington Lane crossing where he jumps on and off the bank, one stride to the pimple. And the distance between the bank and the pimple was a little bit long, so some horses actually bank the pimple, which is perfectly safe. He's a very classy rider, and there, across the corner at the Vicarage V, and you can see from a long way away that Blythe was really focused on the line that he wanted to be on. Now this footbridge was actually quite wide. But this mare's such a good jumper. You know, it was relatively straightforward for her. And the next fence is the sunken road. In, and then down through the drop, and up over the other side. And again, he rode a positive line, had the right amount of energy, and good balance, and a good turn. Now, the lake, you run a little bit down the hill to it, to a bounce in, and she lands very positively. And how quickly the deep water comes up is very difficult for the horses to actually cope with because the drag of the water really stops them in their tracks. Mark Todd and Kinvara come into the three diamonds. He jumps the first corner very well, now he turns right. 
but never really gets the horse round the corner and unfortunately incurs 20 pounds so if you look the horse is almost motorbiking and then doesn't have a good enough balance to jump the corner although he tries well let's take another look at some of these fences Sarah starting with Christina Gifford she's coming to the same fence with Smithstown Lair these sort of fences require tremendous accuracy and as it's early on in the course the horse must be tuned in and there the horse was just not really aware of the fact that he was going to come to a fence or being prepared to jump a fence. If you look at him, he, you know, he's just not quite concentrating on what Christina's asking him to do. We're at fences 10 and 11 now with Stuart Bunting and Plantagenet. Now he found the distance too long for one stride and too short for two strides and unfortunately paid the penalty and had a stop. If he lands a little bit unbalanced on the top of the bank and then everything just comes in a little bit of a rush and the horse isn't really again tuned in and isn't really organised. And the next fence after the Vicarage V is the footbridge. And as you can see the footbridge is diagonally across the ditch which makes for a very accurate takeoff. Pascal Loire and Papus, and he didn't really have enough commitment and the horse just at the last second actually saw the ditch almost dropped on his forehand, see how far the horse is away from the footbridge, and then the jump is far too wide, and so the horse never makes enough height, hits it with his front legs, and the rider falls. Miranda Tulloch and Matterhorn coming to the sunken road. And the horse runs to the palisade and then just keeps running, and his hind legs haven't caught up with the forehand, so he has no way of taking off over the last palisade. It's just a little bit of over-zealousness, really. Mario Christine Duwar coming to the same fence. And a lot of horses look a little bit surprised to see the actual sunken road bit after the palisade. And that horse is just so genuine and so athletic, and he could get out of trouble. He jumps the palisade quite well and then seems very shocked by the sunken road, so he has to rebalance himself but then jumps out like a real nimble character. The same horse coming down to the lake, jumps the first rail, isn't quite sure, puts in a little stride, jumps left and gets into very deep water. And deep water plays habit with the horse's actual impulsion. So she has to take her time finding her way out. Although this will incur time penalties, she's actually still clear. Mary Thompson and King William coming to the Three Diamonds. Mary got a beautiful line through this, and King William was a big horse. It showed that cleverness of a pony. Pop, pop, pop. Mary Christine Duwa and Cart de Passano to the staircase. And again, the horse doesn't really have a very good approach. And almost buckets up the steps. And then he doesn't have the right impulsion to jump straight out, so she has to go the long route. And then doesn't really take enough care on the turn, and the horse nearly loses his hind legs. Well, the lake is always a critical complex, and certainly for Andrew and Morris and Keystone Spectrum. But he totally left his off four leg on the second rail, hit it with his forearm. When that happens, there's no way that the horse can complete the jump and land on all four legs. And again, we have Mary Christine Duroy coming to the quarry, and this poor horse struggled over. And missed at the wall and it was amazing to see the horse trot up so soundly on the Sunday when the rider's out of balance down the slope can't help the horse the horse sees the rail and he's so genuine he tries to jump it but it's a great deal of punishment to such a genuine horse to actually see them climbing over Tanya Cleverly and Watkins coming to the sunken road he's a big horse for a girl to keep together He's very athletic, and he's good because he just looks to see where he's supposed to be going. Jim Lang with Bolton Houdini at the start. And as Sarah was saying about Ginny with her dressage, she has this little bit of showmanship. The same cross-country, always neat, tidy, organised. But if you walk a cross-country course with Ginny, she'll find things and see things that you'll have totally missed. The attention to detail is second to none. And Tanya and Watkins coming to the lake. 
and he lands so well in the shallow water and Tanu's got time to then reorganize them and jump out not the most direct route but now she's got all her reins too long and she's almost going to miss the next fence but she does the most sensible thing she stops she gets reorganized and then kicks him to the Mitsubishi fence Ginny again this time at Luckington Lane I've seen this fence before now he lands on the bank very balanced but then he finds the distance there too long for one stride and he really condenses himself and puts in the tiniest of strides before he jumps the pimple. And Mark Todd with just an ace there coming to the three diamonds. I think once you've made a mistake as a fetch, you think, God, am I going to do it again? I remember Mark one year at badminton, he fell at the coffin on both horses. So he's got to jump this without incurring penalty. Well done. So he'll be pleased about that after the first horse's <coughs> efforts at that fence. Well, Ginny Ling uh, had a bit of a close call here at the leg, didn't she? He jumped in very big, landed very steeply, and she couldn't turn him, and she got both hands on the right rein. But that's how sharp she is in her mind. She knows exactly where she wants to go, and if she's not getting there, she'll do something about it pretty quickly. Ginny coming to the staircase. Lovely. The horse just laboured a little bit at the last step, but Ginny just kept her leg on, kept her eye on the palisade. Coming to the lake, jumps in well. He set up for that, didn't he? Yeah, but when you're six feet, however, you've got a little bit more strength over somebody who's five feet four or five. So Ginny's finding Houdini getting a little bit strong at the last fence. And she's just into the lead. Only just. So all to play for on the final day. Now, the, these fences are always quite difficult because it's difficult for the horses to judge the correct takeoff spot. This horse dived at that rail, he should really have put in another stride which would have brought him close to the rail and poor old Mark really hurt his ankle. Now there you can see the horse taking off far too far away in order to try and get over the rail he has to reach for it but he pays the penalty because he just can't make it. And that was the leaderboard after the cross country with Jenny Lang with that narrow lead of point two over Tanya Cleverly, then Blythe Tate, Mary Thompson and Vicky Lata. Ricochet, fast. Sunday morning and the third inspection of horses. And again, this is a very tense time, isn't it? And it is a very tense time. And there have been horses that outside they've been sound and then they've come and they've stood up in front of the panel and then trotted and they haven't been sound. And it is the worst time. But William looks pretty sound. And Mary's taking her time turning him round because it's actually very slippy there. It'd be terrible if you actually lost the horse and he slipped and as a result was then lame. Look at William here, he's very naughty. He takes exception to something and shoots off. And he's so big, Mary doesn't have a huge amount of influence on him when he's going to do something like that. King William, pause. Now the show jumping. But on the top of the leaderboard was very, very tight, Sarah. So Tania cleverly really had to get the clear. That's right, she was point two, I think, behind Ginny. Now, this is a very big horse for a girl. He stands over an awful lot of ground, and with show jumping, it's vital that the riders are able to keep the horses together and that the riders are able to keep enough energy in the canter. And he looks sometimes as though he just gets a little bit long and strung out in the canter which then can make the jumping a little bit flat and this combination was down the hill and quite long and you saw that she had the first element down and she's got one more fence to jump she's already had one down and this was a square parallel well, she'd added five penalties but in the meantime, Blythe Tate has scored a clear, so the pressure was really right. on Ginny. So Blythe had gone ahead of Tanya, and Ginny, I don't think, had a fence in hand. But Ginny's been in this position before. And she's just, and I'm sure she gets nervous, we all get nervous. But she seems to be able to cope very well. And she knows all about winning, doesn't she, Peter, at this level? Oh, absolutely, and it's very much in her temperament. But as you were saying earlier, Sarah, this, we, all right, it's a different sort of horse, but 
that lovely shortness that Jimmy gets him into, that shape. Yeah. But some people just dream of completing badminton. But people like Ginny, they actually want to win and they know how to win. to finish badminton on the closest of scores. Ginny Ling had no margin of error there at all and couldn't make the slightest mistake. But she's won her third badminton. But the third place, Tanya Cleverly. What about her performance, Sarah? Yes, known to a lot of us as Tanya Longson before she got married. And she came up through the junior and young rider ranks and she's been very successful all the way along. And she's had a lot of experience at championship level, so it's really nice to see her coming through into the limelight. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Horse Trials Review. We'll be back in the autumn. We'll have the European Championships for you from Aschersfang in Germany. Our thanks to Sarah for helping us out again. That's a pleasure to be able to help you out, Peter. And for myself and Sarah, thanks for being with us. Goodbye for now. Thank you.